But it says I'm live. I like how they made it so much easier to uh, go live than it used to be, even though uh, it took YouTube took away the ability to uh, add people uh, to your live. Wait a minute. There's a thing here that shows add people. Ah, I wonder if that will work. Oh, no. It's not to add people. It's people watching. Okay, it shows the number of people watching. And it shows the number of likes, uh, and we don't have any yet because uh, we're just starting out. Uh, this is going to be a short, impromptu uh, whiskey unboxing video because there are other things I want to do after this, namely watch more videos and catch up. And um, there's going to be a live, <coughs> I think, in about a couple hours with uh, Whiskey Jason, and I hope to catch some of that. But uh, without any further uh, mucking around, well, maybe wait till there's a few more people watching. What the hell? It's going to be a short one anyway. I don't care. I don't have to have a lot of people watching. This here is the box. This box came to me from, uh, from Mike. Uh, Mike's Whiskey Reviews, formerly uh, Mike and Billy's Whiskey Reviews. There's four people watching. Great. There's Stephen Lang saying, there's a like quig. <laughs> Great shirt. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I like the shirt. It's uh, I got this one when I went to uh, the, uh, I think I'll just cut this rather than take the label off. Got this shirt when I went to Drumheller, uh, Drumheller, Alberta. They have a big uh, dinosaur museum there. And uh, it was a good trip. I enjoyed seeing uh, seeing the, the dinosaurs and learning a bit about them. And of course, when you go to something like that, you got to get the T-shirt. Uh, I'm watching Mister says Ronnie Days or Dab. Yeah. Okay, great. Glad you're watching. Glad somebody's watching. I hope I'm not doing this at the same time as someone else is doing it. And. Uh, Whiskey Pilgrim says, cheers from Sweden. Cheers. Cheers, Skull. I have some uh, 40 Creek, 40 Creek Barrel Select. Comes in a great 1.75 liter bottle. So it lasts a little while. And there's seven people watching. Wow, now they're, now they're starting to find me in three thumbs up already. Good. We've got bubble wrap. We've got, oh, we've got the whiskey in a bubble wrap. These are some really special samples that Mike put together for me. Uh, they are things that I can't get here and have never seen here. This is very well wrapped. Look at this. Here's one bottle. And six thumbs up. Six people watching. Fantastic. Fantastic. This has got some kind of cling wrap on it. Very nice. And this is the Ardbeg 23-year-old. 23-year-old Ardbeg at 46.3%. That's going to be nice. I don't believe I've ever had an Ardbeg that was quite that old. Okay. That's going to be good. Now there's apparently two more in here. Okay, five people watching. We've got more of this really wonderful, terrific bubble wrap taped together. Wow. He was making real sure that this wouldn't break. And wouldn't it just be fitting for me to drop it on the floor and it goes shatters? <laughs> That's all we need is shattering on the floor now. Oh, I'm smelling some whiskey. Did a little bit leak out? Yes, a little bit did leak out. It's all in the wrapping, but we didn't lose that much. This got wet. Ooh. And I can't read the label. The label is all wet. All the ink on the label has come off. 
There's Stephen Langs. They love the 40 Creek Barrel Select and the Copper Pot and Double Barrel Reserve are amazing Canadian whiskeys. Yes, they are. They're very good. Careful. Yeah, I'll, I'll be careful. <laughs> yeah. So this one here didn't seal properly, and I can't read the label, but I do have a photograph of what three whiskeys he sent me. Now, if the other one didn't leak, this last one, if this last one didn't leak and the label is intact, we can um, figure out what this one is. By a simple process of deduction. I will put this bubble wrap away and maybe I can reuse the bubble wrap and reuse the box for sending another sample to someone else. Yeah. Okay. Hope you're having a good Sunday. Well, I, uh, I woke up at about midnight and I was up until about three because I went to sleep last night. I was tired. I, I, I catch up on my sleep on the weekend because, uh, as you may or may not know, I work nights. Oh, it just slides right out. I don't have to undo the tape. That's beautiful. Okay, that goes in a box. That goes away here. To join the other wrappings that I happen to have. This one here is also wrapped up. Yeah. I think I mentioned to Mike that they got here, that these, these got here. There's Don Holland saying, cheers, gents, and hello, Andy. Hi, Don. Good to see you again. Or good to see your commenting. It's nice to have you with us for this. Oh. Cling wrap. I don't know about the cling wrap idea. But I guess that this one does not smell like whiskey. And this one also has a intact, readable, legible label just you gotta figure out where the beginning of the cling wrap is so that you can get it open and i'm not really good at that i'm just ripping and tearing right now seeing that none of this is uh leaked it seems to be the seal is intact come on i'm a bit impatient Come on. Get off of there. Ah. This is the legendary Hakushu 12 at 43%. I can't get Hakushu here. I can get Hibiki, but I can't get Hakushu. So this... This is a special one. Now, so we got Hakushu 12, we got Ardbeg 23, and the other one, I'll have to check the photograph that Mike sent me to figure out what it is. Um, oh, wait, maybe it's on my, it's probably in my email somewhere. Craft sellers, there, Bill sent me oh that's it's not bill it's mike sorry mike <laughs> oh come on where are you well i probably probably um wait let's move the mail out of the way let's move this out of the way and oh there's the picture here it is I knew I had the picture. It's on my desktop. Come on. It's taking a moment because uh, there we are. Oh, it's a talisker. Talisker, 30, 30 year old talisker. That's what this is. 30 year old talisker. 23-year-old Ardbeg and the Hakushu 12. 
30 year old Talisker. Wow. Okay. I should write that on this label. Oh, crap. It doesn't write very well. <laughs> um, I'll be right back in just a second. I'm going to get me a fresh label and label this thing because I'm going to forget what it is. Ah. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> I uh, conveniently keep my labels in the kitchen. Why? I don't know. I just do. All right. Uh, who said something here? Uh, if you're having a good Sunday, cheers, gents. Okay. Donner Pass. Good morning, Quig and everyone. Stephen Lang says, uh, does your work week begin tonight, Andy? Yes, it does. I'm going to have an afternoon nap after this. Don Holland says, Andy, I've had all of 10 drinks since February 7th. Wow. Wow. I've had that this weekend. How is sobriety treating you? I, I would find that hard. There's Soren SM says, hi, Quig, hi, all. That bottled wall is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, it is. I added a couple to it this week. There's Dago Cleo saying, nothing like gifts in the mail. Cheers, Andy. Very nice samples. Yeah. Wow, those are all rare treasures. Exactly. And here's Welsh Toro saying, good evening, big guy, and all my fellow malt mates. Yes. Ah, Slanchova, Welsh. And Stephen Lang, the Talisker sounds very interesting. Distiller's Edition Talisker was outstanding. Yeah, Distiller's Edition Talisker is nice. There's a few Diageo uh, Distiller's Edition that I have not found yet. And one that I'm looking forward to is Cragenmore, if I can ever get my hands on that. Apparently, it's a forecast finish. I was watching um, uh, Bart last night from the Scotch Test Dummies and his 10 whiskeys that you must try before you die. And he pulled out the Cragenmore Distillers edition. I'm like, oh, I can't get that here. But I have had the, um, I have had the, uh, the Talisker Distillers edition. So I'm going to put Talisker 30 there. Now there's going to be no ambiguity as to what is in this bottle. Let's just peel this. This. Uh, whiskey logged label off of here and it comes right off because the whiskey has eaten away at the glue it comes right off it's all wet it smells good oh there's even a, i even smell a little bit of the uh the uh the peat you can smell some peat in the uh in the wrapping in the uh label okay oh. I'm sure this is very dry. Oh, 12 people watching. Yeah. And Hoagie's here too. Hello, Andy. How are things in Canada land? Oh, <laughs> fine. Fine. It's uh, right now, it's kind of looking outside. It's kind of rainy and overcast and dark. Otherwise, I would have the window, uh, the, the drapes open, and you could. Uh, see the beautiful sunlight which we don't have but uh, yeah it's a uh, talisker 30 and here we go there there's no doubt about what that is now so now as things sit i have six samples left to taste these three from um Mike's Whiskey Reviews, the Ardbeg 23, 46.3%. The uh, Hakushu 12 at 43%. 
and the Talisker 30 at I don't know how many percent. Uh, maybe I can glean some more information from the bottle here. It just says 30 years old, and the label doesn't, uh, the uh, percentage. Oh, wait. The writing is too small to see. Too small to see. But anyway, I know what it is. It's Talisker 30. I can look that up and find out. Um, details on Talisker 30 or different bottlings of it and figure out how much the alcohol by volume is. Okay. Broke your arm bad. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry to hear that, Don. Craig and more distillers edition, the green one. Uh, Don, the best wishes to you on a quick healing. Yeah, same for me. Gosh, that's crappy. What else have we got? I have from Whiskey Jason, A Writer's Tears, Cast Strength, 2018, 53%. Whiskey Base, 116096. And I found out recently that Whiskey Base is in, um, in, the, in the Netherlands rather than in Germany. I didn't know that before. Here's another Irish one from, uh, from Whiskey Jason. It's Dead Rabbit Irish Whiskey at 44%. Whiskey Base, 116334. And one more here from the Bourbon Professor. It's a Brickway Single Malt, 52.5% ABV, 105 proof, from Omaha, Nebraska. So that's going to be, those are the six samples that I have left. And I had like 40 samples or so back in February. So I've been going through them slowly, even though people have been uh, sending me samples. I've been going through them and uh, getting getting to the point where I'll just be doing bottles and uh, not just bottles, but uh, bottles and and uh, coming back to bottles that didn't quite hit me the right way when I first tried them. Yeah. Okay. Graham Young says, fine day here in the East Coast. Fantastic. Thanks, Hoagie Bear, says Don, yeah. Uh, you started very early for the West Coast. Yeah, I know, but I have to go to bed. I have to go to sleep in the afternoon because I work tonight. So it's 10.45 now. I always work nights, so I, I usually drink in the morning after work. And Hoagie says all the latest... OBS of Talisker are bottled at their standard 45.8. That makes sense. Thank you. I should put 45.8. Even the 30-year-old. Okay. I believe you. 45.8 makes, makes sense. But what if it's gone... What if it's done some more evaporating and lost some? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll assume that it's 45.8. So it would be perfect drinking strength. Excellent. Donner Pass is saying, just watch the video you posted this morning. Glad you were able to hang out with Alan, the whiskey friend, and Welsh Toro. Yeah. Uh, Talisker 30, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We hung out with, uh, with a few people. Um, there was also... Oh, my goodness. There was uh, Jason Whiskey Wise down in London. There was um, Roy Aquavite. Met up with him in Glasgow. Met up with a couple other people in Glasgow. Uh, one of them was and John McGowan. Yeah, we spent an evening at the Bon Accord with John McGowan, which was a really good time. Uh, he would buy a whiskey and we would try it and then I would buy a whiskey and we would try it and we had to guess it was sort of like a little informal game guess what it is and oh what well, this is good what is it you know kind of thing uh, and we were there for I don't know I think we had about six or seven drams and it was a very good time Vin no nonsense yes of course <laughs> we met up with him in, in, in Birmingham as well and uh, and there was Alan, the whiskey friend, and uh, and that was that was in uh, 
that was in Manchester. And we also met up with uh, um, Phil, Phil Dwyer from the uh, whiskey shop in Manchester as well. Um, and uh, who else? There were a few more people, I think. There was a whiskey tasting um, at the Bon Accord the night before I was there um, with uh, John McGowan. And I'm trying to remember who else was there. There was a whole bunch of locals from, from Glasgow. Uh, well, of course, uh, of course, uh, Roy was there. And uh, then we met up with uh, with Whiskey Jason the next day, and there, there's Whiskey Jason right there saying hi. Yeah, I'm gonna tune in to your to your live later on, uh, Jason. But I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to stay with it because I'm gonna have to go to sleep because I work tonight. Yeah, good to have you joining us. That's wonderful. We got 16 people on now. It's nice, and we've been going for 21 minutes. I'm not going to go much longer because I want to leave the uh, leave the floor to uh, to Jason, and also I want to watch a few videos before I go to sleep. I get so far behind sometimes. And Hoagie says, "Last Talisker at Cast Strength came out in 2010, but is probably worth a couple of thousand bucks now." Uh, last 30. Okay, well this could be it. Uh, the uh, it seems that Mike has quite uh, quite a budget for whiskey, or should I say, he's he gets whiskey that I can't possibly afford. Twenty three year old hard bag. I'd never. I'd probably not go for a bottle of that. I was even at the liquor store a couple nights ago, and uh, there are some uh, single barrel Highland Parks, and uh, they're bottled at cast strength they're like 58 percent and it's like it's over 200 dollars a bottle and i'm going ah, i don't want to pay that same thing with things like masters keep and they they you know it would be nice if the price was reasonable then we could all try them but they they're they're pricing themselves away from um just common people like me uh and so that only the those who earn a lot of money can can afford them or those who cash in their retirement can afford them uh, i've had to cash in some retirement lately because um uh, well i i went and and went for the uh, whiskey advent calendar the sixth edition from secret spirits i just purchased that yesterday and that should be coming in the mail eventually when they get them together and then there's the premium spirits release coming up in early November. And I haven't gone through the premium spirits release from last year yet. I did have one whiskey and that was the, um, 11 year old, uh, lot 40 cask strength, uh, the same bottle, which I gave to Jason, uh, the bottle that I had, I just opened it in the last week. Uh, mostly to send a couple samples to a couple people who've been sending me samples and, um, and also to try it. So, uh, <laughs> whiskey, Jason, hi, Jason, do Alta bourbon rec. <laughs> will store and will give bear. Okay. The live will be, about rye whiskey this evening in German. Yes, well, I'll see if I can understand anything. I'm definitely looking forward to, I haven't come on one of yours yet. And, and this evening, I, how many hours are we apart? That should come on at, at, at about noon, right? So in about an hour, if I'm not mistaken, I can do that. But if it's much later, I will be sleeping when you start. Here's Mr. Anuknach. Good eve to you, sir. Good eve to you too, Slantava. And uh, well, she says hi to Don Holland and Hoagie saying, just opened my bottle of Michter's Barrel Proof Rye a few days back. Fine. First impression, very tasty. That's the other thing. They had some Michter's at the liquor store. And we were looking at the pricing on it and going, well, you know, this would be fine at half the price, but $136. 
Canadian plus taxes. We're talking 150 plus. Too much. For what it is, it costs too much. At least around here. I don't know about stateside, but Michter's. I had a couple of bottles um, back some time ago. And it was good, but it wasn't worth what the asking price was on it. On it. it just wasn't, just didn't seem to be, have that value. And Whiskey Jason says barrel proof rye is a bit hot, but very nice. Okay. There's a Welsh mat here. Another Welshman. There we go. <laughs> Wonderful. And Graham Young saying, so true, there are so many very expensive whiskeys that I would buy, but independent bottlers are offering so much more value. Yeah, Graham, um, I know there's one shop where I can go and get some independents, but still our independent bottles are, are quite limited. And the other thing with independents is they, they can be hit or miss. I... I've had some that were really nothing special and some that were just outstanding. I have here an 11 year old Deanston that was just blew my doors off, but you know, it's even better than the, uh, than the Deanston 18 official bottling. And the only thing is when, when you see our section of, of, uh, independence, I think Tranny, Oh no, that was, that was on, Patreon, uh, where Trenny and C did, um, went to one of the shops that, that I like to frequent and they showed the collection there. And there's so many official bottlings that by the time you get to the, uh, independence, which are kind of like at the back, uh, you've already <laughs> filled your shopping cart on the way out. Uh, okay. Bogey's saying to Whiskey Jason, that's you and high proof whiskeys. I think I mind the heat way less than you do. Oh, it could be. I I like going up to about 52% myself, and that's wonderful. Uh, much more than that, I do have to add a little bit of water. And Whiskey Jason says, apparently so. And there's Juliet Miranda joining us. Hi, Juliet. Nice to have you with us. I don't know how long I'm going to keep going, but maybe a little while. And I can't believe it. I'm caught up on the comments <laughs> on the live chat. Usually I, I end up getting behind on the live chat and uh, and uh, hope, hopelessly falling behind what's going on. But not today. Got to get another bottle of water. These things empty fast. All right. What are you drinking? I have here some, I'll show you the bottle. This is a good cheap Canadian whiskey. Comes in these huge, it's 40 Creek Barrel Select. It comes in these huge uh, 170 uh, liter uh, 1.75 liter bottles and um, it lasts a long time and uh, you know it's a good deal it's uh, 1.75 liters for $50 drink it all day and king of lo-fi lo ASMR hello sir hello king of lo-fi good to have you with us and Graham Young says you get caught up because of those less than quig size sample drams. <laughs> now that is a nice size bottle. Yeah, it's decent. I've got a couple others uh, like similar to it. Uh, let me pull them out. Uh, 
Uh, more Canadian whiskey by the jug. This is a Hiram Walker special. And I was able to get the last bottle that there was. No more. And I have this one here. There's another special old. That's Potter's special old. That's from Highwood in Alberta. So both of those are excellent as well. <laughs> yep. But I think since we're kind of celebrating a little bit here, celebrating the acquisition of these wonderful samples from Mike, of Mike, uh, uh, from Mike, of Mike's Whiskey Reviews. I have here the Lot 40 cask strength, 11-year-old, uh, bottle number 1996 of 4,020, bottled at 58.4% alcohol by volume, and it's going down fast. I just opened this up uh, a couple of days ago, but I did send a couple samples away. Uh, yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 there's still some of the other stuff in there. Mm. Grab a fresher glass. Yeah. All right. Now, this was $99.99. Um compared to like almost three times as much for 50 bucks. And this is the 100% rye. This is great stuff. Okay. Uh, Forty Creek Confederation blend is quite good stuff. Um, Confederation oak. Yes, I remember that one. I think I had it a couple of years back. And it was okay. Um, it didn't live up to my expectations exactly. Uh, from Forty Creek, I, they have an annual release and I have their uh, Unity, which I'm gonna try shortly. Um, that's the annual release from last year, from, eight, from uh, November of 2018. And I will be trying that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Con Confederation Oak is, I don't know, it was missing something. Uh, give me a copper pot over it any day, but that's just my own personal preference. The Confederation Oak is nice, but it, it didn't quite live up to my expectations. And Welsh Toro says, recently got a couple of fantastic bottles of single barrel store pick, 10 year by Whistle Pig, bottled by Nichols and Parks in the UK. A stunning rye, really. Well, you know what that is. That's basically Alberta from Alberta Distillers. This is the Alberta Premium. And it's the same juice, but aged longer and uh, sent to Vermont, I believe, uh, to be bottled by Whistlepig. But I think Whistlepig has their own juice now, don't, don't they? Or are they still using some, they must be using some Alberta juice still if it's, uh, if it's aged 10 years, yeah, 10 years would be all Alberta juice. So it's basically the same as this, but um, but aged longer and bottled at a higher proof because this is at 40%. This is your bottom shelf, even though it looks like a fancy decanter. It's This is your bottom shelf uh, Canadian 100% rye whiskey. I drink that all day too. That's just wonderful stuff. Cost me with all taxes under thirty dollars a bottle, so that's nice. And yeah, we don't get bottles for nine dollars and ninety nine cents here. If you get a bottle for twenty dollars plus tax, that's about the lowest price you're going to pay around here. But that's British Columbia for you. Oh yeah. Uh, and Juliet loves a great rye. Well, so do I. That's what this is. <laughs> Graham Young, Lot 40 is my favorite rye. I even think it like it more than the 12-year-old from the previous year. Looking forward to the NAS once. But, uh, yeah, it's coming out soon, another month and a bit, and we should be getting the, uh, 
the non-age statement uh, block 40. I don't know. Going by memory, I preferred the um, the 12 year old. But this, uh, I, I should let this open up before I finish it. <laughs> I mean, I just opened it up half a bottle and it's just, it's going too fast. Much too fast. I sat on this thing for almost a year and now in two days. Oh. Well, okay, two of them were samples and I also added to my infinity bottle. Don't forget. I have a couple of Canadian infinity bottles of which I put uh, maybe this much in. So that's why it's going down so fast. So I've only had a couple of drams from this myself. This is, I think, my third quick size dram. And uh, what else have we got here? Oh, they're going faster now. Now you're making me tear up a bit. Still yearning to try this bad boy one day, but found no way to get a hold of a sample yet. Oh, hoagie. Um, send your address. Uh, send me an email. Fruitquig at shaw.ca. I'm just going to put that down here. Oh, why didn't that work? Okay, I had to click on it. Send me an email at uh, foodquig at show.ca and we can uh, maybe work something out because I wouldn't want you to miss this. <laughs> That's what it's for anyway. It's, it's for sharing. And uh, and Faiz H.G. Al-Rahim says, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? And Faiz says, what's the most expensive bottle you bought? Oh, that one over there. <laughs> yeah. Here it is, the most expensive. It was $310 Canadian. It's a Canadian Club 41 year old. Haven't opened it yet, but I plan to shortly. This was also from the uh, Spirits release. It comes with a card, it comes in a baggie. And so uh, uh, I'll. I'll do the ceremony of opening that when it's time to do so. That one cost me 310 Canadian with all taxes. And they're not moving fast at that price. The 40-year-old was about uh, 60 or $70 less, and it disappeared off the shelves immediately. I had a lot of fun tracking some down. Oh, oh. Hmm, it's getting better since I opened it. I'm probably getting very behind right now because because I'm answering everybody's questions. <laughs> uh, Ringo the Lone Rider says, greetings from North Ireland, enjoying your show. I'm enjoying some Cuddy Sark Prohibition. Yes, that's another good, good low buck special, fantastic whiskey. I still have some over there too. Good stuff. Ah, okay. And Graham says, Whistle Pig is still an all Alberta rye, you believe. So I guess their own juice that's made in Vermont is still aging in barrels and, and not uh, not being uh, sold yet. Hasn't been bottled yet, I imagine. Ah. What age did you have your first whiskey? Ah. Must have been about 18. 
when I was allowed to drink. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I went into a bar and I was all big and proud and I, I ordered a scotch on the rocks and it was terrible. It was terrible. Then I think I, I started trying the Canadian whiskeys and that's where I really got going. But I was also a heavy beer drinker, so I usually drank beer and whiskey was only for more special occasions. But when, like me, you find out in your 40s that you're diabetic, you got to wean yourself off the beer because it's nothing but carbohydrates that turn to blood sugar as soon as they hit your gullet. So I switched to whiskey and have not looked back. But yeah, I had my first whiskeys in my teens. Uh, and there, oh, okay. Uh, Open my first Glendronic 18, says Donner Pass. A few weeks ago, fantastic stuff. Yeah. I was not quite, the 2017, yeah, that's the same edition I had. And you know what? To me, personally, it didn't live up to the hype. I tried it. Uh, I paid the, the price of admission. I tried it. It was good, but I'm not the biggest Cherry Bomb fan. I don't mind a bit of Sherry to finish things up, like with the um, Balvenie Double Wood. That's good. But if it's a sherry bomb, there's only a few sherry bombs that I like, and they tend to be things like Glen Farkless 105 and uh, Glen Farkless 15. But uh, the, the Glendronic, mm, I prefer the peated Glendronic, actually, which is, you know, some people would say, oh, sacrilege, oh, weird. But, you know, that's just me. Um, okay. And DJ Beacon says, uh Cheers, Quig, and everyone. Hope it's a good weekend. It's good so far. I don't know how much longer I'm going to stay on, but, you know, I always go longer than I plan. Uh, okay. To Donner Pass, have you tried the Glendronic catch, cask batch number seven yet? Any thoughts? Well, they have a batch seven now. I think I had batch four some time ago. Welsh Toro says, these good rye whiskeys go down fast. I had to put the brakes on my lot 40 cast strength. Thanks, mate. Because I promised a few drams to friends. The bottle of whistle pig was finished fast. Yeah. And Hoagie says, thanks, Quig. Um, wrote it down. I'll send you an email soon. Great. I look forward to it. Donner Pass is saying to DJ Beacon, have not had any of the cast strength ones, but have tried the 12, 15, 18. They're all very good. Okay. DJ Beacon saying, Donner Pass Whiskey, I really enjoy the 12, but not much else around here. Just saw a bottle of the Cast Strength for 100, but haven't pulled the trigger. Oh, I haven't seen Cast Strength in a while here. We seem to be getting things like uh, the new Old Pulteney um, range is there. I haven't gone through the old Old Pulteney range yet. Uh, DJ Beacon Whiskey. At Donner Pass, I really enjoy the 12, but not much else. Okay, there we go. There's somebody else, Troy Phillip. Any whiskey brands that are not worth their price? Many. <laughs> and Hoagie's asking me, which city do I live in? I live in Victoria. It's in British Columbia. It's on Vancouver Island. It's the extreme west coast of Canada. Uh, if you look at the west coast of Canada, you'll see Vancouver Island. And at the bottom, the south end of Vancouver Island, just across the water from Seattle, is Victoria. That's where I live. Graham Young says, Cavalan Solist was my favorite sherry bomb. That stuff was dark. Yeah, it was dark. Sure was. I had a bottle of that. It didn't really... That wasn't worth the price, if you ask me. A lot of McAllen's are not worth the price. 
Um, the list goes on. These these are worth the price. These are definitely worth the price. Oh, you know what? This is opening up beautifully. It's got a nice spicy finish. And I'm getting caramels and vanillas. Mm. Viscous mouthfeel. A bit of a sting from the high alcohol. And a spicy finish that just coats the entire inside of the mouth and just stays there and 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 hangs on and hangs on and hangs on. Oh, a lot 40, yeah. And I remember the 12 year old being even a little better. Well said, there are a lot of seriously overhyped whiskey brands out there. Glendronach is one of them. Yes, exactly. Well, she and Donor Pass is saying to DJ Beacon, thought about the cast strength, but they are not reviewed that well, so did not buy. Can you order online where you are? 15 and 18 available for good price at uh, Remedy or the Whiskey Exchange. Okay, 15. I haven't seen 15 here. In fact, I haven't seen the 18 for quite a while. Uh, it's hard to get. It was becoming hard to get when I got my bottle over a year ago. And we are talking about the Glendronic. And DJ Beacon says, thanks. Um, looking at Remedy and Ace Spirits to try my first meal order. Glen Morangy Signet. Oh, Glen Morangy Signet. Ah, is another good one. That is chocolate malt to the extreme. I had that one in Edinburgh where I was staying at the Motel One in Edinburgh. And um, I went to the bar because I didn't have any whiskey of my own. Or if I had some whiskey, I finished it. And I went down to the bar, and I looked at what they had on the shelf up there. And I've you know, uh, had that, I've had that, I've had that, I've had that, I've had that. I've had that, I've had that, I've had that. Every whiskey on their shelf I have had, except for the Glen Morangy Signet. And uh, I asked for that. And they said, that'll be 35 pounds. And uh, so I had a dram of Glen Morangy Signet for 35 pounds. And I ended up giving her, giving the guy 40 pounds for it. So that's $80 Canadian approximately for one dram like this of Glen Morangy Signet. Well, I was on vacation, so what, what do you do, right? And I'd never had it before, and I was curious, and so I tried it, and it, it was wonderful. And then after I'd finished my dram, the guy said, uh, you're the first one I've ever seen order that one, that, that, that whiskey. And I said, well, it's the only one you had that I never tried. <laughs> and, uh, and I asked him, well, how long had you been working there? He said, oh, a couple of years. So... Nobody had had any of that Glen Morangy Signet, at least that he saw, in two years. So who knows how old that bottle was. On the nose, ah, I'm getting that beautiful, beautiful rye grain on the nose. Fabulous. It's like a dark rye bread. And, oh, this one, if you spend time with it, if you take your time with it, 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 it does change subtly. It changes as you go along. It's nice. Mm. Got to stay hydrated. Uh Okay. Welsh Toro says to Troy Phillip, let's think. McAllen, Dalmore, Highland Park, Beaumore, Ardbeg, Aberlour, anything Japanese, a growing amount of bourbon, etc., etc. Yeah, Welsh, you're right. That's uh, pretty much it. I, I could have said the same thing if I took the time to think about it. 
but they're still worth trying at least once. And I have tried <clears throat> most of them. Japanese, well, I've tried some Japanese, but anything with an age statement, like this Hakushu 12, I've never had an age stated Japanese whiskey. They just don't, they're just not available here. Thanks once again, Mike, for sending me those. Uh, huh. Daniel Vermas. Hello, guys. Got to go. F1 replay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Donner Pass is saying, if you do remedy, as Glenn going for ridiculously low prices, 18 for 7, 7, 12. For 32. Wow. DJ Beacon saying, Quig, thanks for sharing that Signet experience. Oh, you're welcome. It was it was really great. The chocolate was just overwhelming. But then I found another chocolate malt, which is a lot cheaper and almost as good. And this is my this is my second bottle of this one. This is a Canadian. Actually, it's a BC product from Surrey. It's, uh, no, um, Granville Island. I think it's Granville Island. No, I think it's Surrey. Anyway, it's a Lowen McKinnon chocolate malt. Yeah. This is my second bottle of this stuff, and it's just amazing. I've I've done a video about it already, and it's it, <laughs> this is. Beautiful, beautiful whiskey. It's not expensive either. Um, but now you can't find it anymore because they only made it for a certain amount of time. And that was released back in 2017, I think. Yeah, 2017 release. Premium Spirits release where I got it. And I tried it earlier this year and it was good. And I went back to the store and there was one left. And this is that one. And that was about two, three months ago. Uh, and Troy Phillips says the first whiskey was the Glenlivet. I don't even know what my first whiskey was. It was some, I mentioned it earlier that it was some abomination, some scotch on the rocks. I should not have asked for rocks, but what did I know at the time? I was 18 years old. Uh, Dram Ben, thank you, ma'am. Sup all. <laughs> well, we've been on for almost an hour. I think I'm going to cut it. Going to cut it real soon. Hoagie Bear at Food Quig looked up Victoria. Say, what prevents anybody to cross the border south via the water and land an EG Port Angeles? Are there border patrol boats? Ah. Uh, There's nothing really stopping you except maybe the waves. Uh, but there is a ferry that goes across to Port Angeles. Uh, but Port Angeles doesn't have a lot of selection when it comes to whiskey. Their whiskey is more generic stuff. And there are no liquor stores. There are no specialty liquor stores. There are no liquor stores at all in Port Angeles. That's because they sell booze in the... Uh, in the grocery stores, in the, in the uh, supermarkets. And the reason they only sell booze and whiskey in the supermarkets is because everybody does the one-stop shop thing and nobody goes to a specialty store. So all the specialty stores were uh, put out of business by uh, them carrying liquor in, uh, in the supermarkets. And the selection is really not that good. The selection is, is limited. The best selection near Port Angeles is if you go a little bit uh, east of Port Angeles to the uh, to the First Nations Reservation, and on the reservation they have like a, they have a liquor store there, and their selection is a little better, but nothing like what I can get here, or nothing like I can get in Seattle, or if I go down to uh, Ocean Shores where I'll be going in about three weeks' time. Uh, there's a music festival that goes on down there, and I. It's Irish and Celtic music, and you know you can drink whiskey all week, and you can listen to sad songs and happy songs and all songs in between. So, I've been going to that thing like about five years in a row. It's a fantastic time down there. 
And uh, I look forward to it. It's a nice break from work because I've been working steady on since I got back from Scotland. And six months of, um, oh shit, that's good. You know, now I'm getting a, a bit of a, a minty note, which I didn't get from Canadian rye whiskey before. And only because I'm taking my time with this do I notice it. It's like a wintergreen minty note. Usually I, I get minty notes from high rye bourbons and uh, American ryes, but Canadian rye usually doesn't have a minty note, but that minty note is developing now. And, uh, oh, that's good. There's that minty note and something earthy as well. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm glad I'm taking my time with it. I think that's the way it should be enjoyed. Um, okay. DJ Beacon says, Jam Ben, thank you, ma'am. Where are you located? I'm in Myrtle Beach. Oh, I've been to Myrtle Beach one time um, several years ago. I guess it was 2012. We, we had a, a Myrtle Beach um, get-together, YouTube get-together with some friends of mine from uh, South Tube. South Tube used to be an event. I think they started it in 2007. And the last one was in 2012. I think it was South Tube 5 or 6. Donner Pass made it through this without pouring a dram before noon. Oh, by my clock, you've got about 36 minutes. <laughs> Houston says Dram Bam. Okay. Donner Pass made it through. Okay. Hope you're safe and dry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, likewise. And DJ says, yeah, Dorian wasn't too bad. Okay. I don't know what you guys are talking about now. Parts of Houston were bad, but okay in the end. Oh, we're talking about a hurricane or something. All right. I don't watch the news and I don't listen to the radio, so I don't know what the hell is going on except when I find out through YouTube. Um, hey, everyone, says Puffs and Drams. Oh, that's a new name I haven't seen before. And Hoagie Bear says, all right, got to go. Have a good night's sleep, Quig. Talk to you soon. Uh, bye, everybody. Bye, Hoagie. And on that note, well, I think I'm going to cut it because we're almost an hour here, and I've been – uh, I thought I'd go on for half an hour, but you know how I get carried away. I will get back to watching some videos and maybe joining Jason's live and uh, then um, going to sleep for my afternoon nap. Slunch of hour.